on us. But the issue... You know, you listen to this thing talking, right? You think of Charlie Brown. I remember as a kid, I used to watch Charlie Brown and Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> they would play the sound effect of Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> You don't believe me? Type in Charlie Brown's teacher from the Peanuts Gang, the, the cartoon series. And I found out that the reason why they did that is because the guy who created the Peanuts cartoon, uh, Charles M. Schultz, when he was growing up, he felt his teachers were just babbling bullshit. So really, Charlie Brown is really supposed to be Charles M. Schultz, who created the Peanuts Gang, the cartoon strip. And he didn't, he didn't have too much love for his teachers when he was growing up. He felt that most of what they were talking about was pure horse shit. That's why in the comic strip, rather in the cartoon series, uh, the teacher is, has that soundbite. When the teacher is in, the, when Charlie Brown's in the classroom and the teacher is speaking, all you hear is because that's all he heard was just noise, babbling noise, and that's what you're hearing with this so-called black woman. And that's why later in the clip, you'll hear Tariq Nasheed start playing the bongos in the back, <laughs> the bongos in the backdrop or in the background rather. Shalom, call Halayim La, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles. The elders of Great Millstone as GMS. Peace and blessings to the Akimen, a few Akwath across the four winds. It's your brother Batamayan from Great Millstone, Houston, coming to you with another lesson. It shouldn't be fairly long, but uh, I watched this video, this quick hit from Elder Apostle Kabar, and it reminded me of what happened last night at camp. You know, we had a. Um, uh, Eve, which is, uh, well, she was a, what we perceive to be a Southern Kingdom woman. You know, she could be, you know, Judah, Benjamin, or Levi. Uh, more than likely, she's probably a Judahite woman. But she came in that, that end of what a nigga woman spirit. First, she walked by and she was on the phone and she stopped. And I was telling her, I was like, you can walk through. And she was kind of like, nah. And she stopped and I was like, or you can listen. And we just kept bringing it out. And I forgot what we said, and then she ended up walking off, and it seemed like she was kind of scoffing or whatnot. Then she ended up coming back. So she came back in, in you know, in a raw, raw spirit, asking these questions. And, you know, I, I probably bring out that precept, too, about um, about men being more precious than women. And we are like, yeah. And the elder, Elder Tazapai in our camp, he was like, well, let's, let's bring out these, these precepts. You know, we was going on and on and then and he's like hey just we gotta bring out these scriptures so hey we start cutting and cutting and then eventually at the end she was leaving or whatnot and then she was trying to be all peaceable like you, you did all that ruckus to come up and, and talk she's like sorry for interrupting and, and peace peace but hey we're not in the time for all that come up and, and be quiet you know but not only that yeah we were telling that you you can't listen and talk at the same time like you, you don't have to wisdom not your understanding and we cut it with that job uh i believe with 39 and 17 the the lord Shai, deprived you know our women of wisdom but they have knowledge of this world but lord willing this this lesson is edifying and straight to the point to the hopeful elect uh the first scripture i have second peter chapter 3 verse 3 Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. And speaking of lust, Elder uh, Tazapai mentioned, he was like, she's probably on the phone with her, her man. I mean, I was like, yeah, that's a good point. And I thought about it, I was like, well, it might not have been her man. It could have been one of her men that she's, you know, dealing with. You know, women now, well, I can't, I got to stop calling them women because they're not female servants. They, they do us a disservice. From their dads to, you know, the men of the Lord on down. But she's probably in like a, uh, I think it's what, polyandry. She's probably into polyandry because she gave that vibe of she's into like her chakras and whatnot. 
but she gave me uh, she gave off that that polyandrous type type spirit where uh, a, a woman can have you know multiple men because women are, are the females in our society believe that there are gods or goddesses however they want to put it you know mother earth but hey your sperm comes from a male you know that's the family jewels the men's nutsack you know that's why they call it the family jewels and you read numbers 1 and 18 that's how you get your lineages through your father's father's father you know your dad's 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 line you know all the way back to the negroes latinos native americans so and the other you know brothers making a point about hey we don't need the so-called Negro, Latino, Native American woman to bring forth an Israelite. We can bring forth an Israelite through any nation. And that lines up with, with numbers 1 and 18. Your lineage goes through the dad, comes from the sperm. Even when you read like through the lineages, like in uh, Matthew, I want to say chapter 1, about the lineage of Yahweh Shai, hey, it's through the dads. But Hey, it's going to be a lot of scoffers in that day saying a lot of gibberish, a lot of nonsense. And, and when he was going into that Charlie Brown, you know, I was kind of like that in school sometimes too. listen to the teachers. That's what they sound like. It's just wah, 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 wah. And that's all they sound like with her too. It's like she's just talking and talking and talking. I'm like, hey, she, you're doing way more talking than listening. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the men, but to be in silence. Hey, that's a handful. And uh, we mentioned last night too that accountability is one of their kryptonites, but also being 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 silent. If you tell a, a female shh or be quiet or, or be silent, that's like uh, <laughs> that's like a, a trigger to them. Like, you can't even tell them they have an anxiety attacks and stuff. You can't even tell them to calm down. Like, you're supposed to be calm so your anxiety can come down. And they'll tell you that. that. That that doesn't work. Well, obviously, nothing else is working. And this is our people destroyed, especially our females. And the elder apostles and the elders, you know, they constantly bring out that quote. If you want to see pretty much how a, a nation is, look at the women. Hey, like, our women are done, man. And we mentioned on the block also about how uh, you'll be on social media like Instagram, Facebook. You see these grandmothers look like they should be in the kitchen baking cookies and stuff. They out here still twerking and stuff. Like, are you serious? Clapping their cheeks. Like, are you, you know, grams with the yams? Like, come on now. Like, we need the grams that, that's cooking yams, not grams that's clapping their yams. Like, like this society is through. That's why this place, Babylon the Grail, the virgin daughter of Babylon, is going to be touched. It's going to be laid waste. It's going to be laid desolate. The only thing that's going to be here is desert-like creatures because this place is filthy, man. From the top to the bottom and everything else in between. This place needs to be reset. And, um, but yeah, the, the main thing was our women just believe that they're above us. The scripture just said, you know, that they're not supposed to usurp authority over men. You know, we brought out the precept too. It's a strange thing in the earth, or a new thing in the earth for the woman should compass a man. Like that's new. That's because that's been pushed heavily in this type of kingdom, just like they did in in, in the ancient Rome. But hey, when the, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked, Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed white man, that's how things are. In Sirach chapter ten, say, as the judges are, so are the people. Hey, that's why this place is filthy and it needs to be utterly obliterated. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of all fear. And that man is the man of the Lord. Hey, something precious is, is something, you know, that's smaller in number. And that's what we we're going into, too. We let her know that, hey, on average, it's about... 14 women to every one man and we explained to her that one man can get 14 women pregnant but 14 men can't get the same woman pregnant only one out of that 14 is, is, that, that sperm is going to reach that egg 
But she really didn't understand that concept. But hey, in the time of Jacob's trouble, which we're in 2024, hey, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble, that's when these females are gonna get back in order instantly. They gonna wanna be in the kitchen. They gonna wanna serve. They gonna wanna be in order. They gonna wanna listen. They gonna wanna be in silence. They ain't gonna wanna be seen. Cause social media gonna be cut off. So they ain't gonna have no choice but to get in order. But Isaiah chapter four, verse one. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel only let us be called by that name to take away our reproach so when they take a, a, a take a, our name that means we're going to come on to them you know we're going to be bonded in marriage meaning through sex you know because a woman will be saved through childbearing but also you can be saved you know by giving a prophet a, a cup of water so you come back and you want to be a servant, <clears throat> which is what the, the word woman means, is a female servant. Hey, you're going to have to do some service. But seven is complete. So seven women, it could be 70, it could be 700, it could be two, you know. It could be 12. We don't know how many number the Lord is going to bless us with. But I guarantee you it's going to be a, a, a multitude of women chasing us down in that day. Because they're going to see us glowing like that golden wedge of Ophir. Like the higher the quality of gold is... Like the higher the carrots, when you get into like the 20s, like 21, 22 karat gold, 24 karat gold, it shines brighter than 8 karat or 10 karat gold or 14 karat. Hey, it shines way brighter than that. It has more of a vibrant look. It has a more of a rich look. And just like in the wilderness, we, we, we want, we're not going to be all dirty and, you know, sneakers all scuffed up or whatnot. In the day of, it's a lot of damn fly. Uh, but in the day of uh, Jacob's trouble, all hell is going to be breaking loose, but the Lord is still going to have us shining. Let, let our light so shine, you know, through the midst of these people in this, in this gross darkness of here in Babylon the Great. But the last precept I had was Micah chapter 7 verse 10. That she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her which said unto me, Where is the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh, Shah, thy power? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. So, you know, it's a lot of scoffers, especially these women. But what they don't realize is Zechariah 13, 8 and 9, which we also brought out too. Two thirds of our people are going to perish. And then we also brought out um, Ephesians 9 and 4 through 6. Hey, a, a lot of those in the two thirds going to be a lot of women from the young ladies all the way up to the elder, older ladies, elderly ladies. Cause, cause what they outnumber men, but on the flip side, in the one third, it's gonna be a lot of uh, females that's gonna be saved too. A lot of women of our nation, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and then also those that look like the other heathen nations. You know, if your spirit resonate with this truth, and your lineage goes back to the Negro, Latino, Native American, then you're an Israelite. But hey, in the time of Jacob's trouble, they're gonna be trodden down as mire in the street. They're gonna be looked upon as, as dung, as the scriptures call it, or boo-boo, or dookie, however you want to call it, feces. You know, that's going to be like shit in the street. We're going we're gonna to be stepping over. You're going to be in that book of Eli spirit. We're going to be so locked in on salvation, we you know, want to travel east, want the chairs to swing low and save us. We're not going to be worried about them in that day. Like uh, Apostle Paul wrote, those that have wives be as though you have none, because our first love, our first wife is what? these scriptures, these precepts, coming on to the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. But Lord willing, this is edifying and straight to the point. Call Halayim La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Bashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles, the elders of Great Millstone as GMS. Peace and bless to the hopeful elect, which is the 12,000 men from the 12 tribes of Israel, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's the 144,000, the elect of the elect. Then you have the innumerable multitude, which is the one third, the men, the women, and children of our nation of Israel. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and those Israelite foreigners that look like the other heathen nations. Shalom and Kwame Ashala.